Hello everyone. Today I'm going to try to explain how to use Stellarium with uh, Next Remote. Now I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube that um, go into it. Uh, one of you know usually a lot of folks try to do it at night. I'm going to do it here, kind of simulate it at night, to where we have a little bit of light to kind of show you the, what the scope does um, and uh, the keyboard and so forth. So anyway, so how do you use it? Well. You know, I find it to be very useful because I can move around and really in more of a in Stellarium you can just click on an object and uh, once you click on the object um, you just can hit a, a couple of buttons and it will slew right to it. Well, how do you integrate then Stellarium with Next Remote? Well, let me try to explain it to you now if I could. So here you have, you've just opened up your, um, uh, you got to set up your virtual keypad first. So you've already um, <clears throat> set up and open uh, your next remote. Uh, so let me just show you the settings in here. So if I can zoom in a little bit. So you see that I have uh, COM6 as my PC port. Now that is the main port that you're going to use to connect to your uh, mount. Now that's the biggest mistake a lot of folks make is because they try to use the same COM port in Stellarium. Well you can't do that because it won't share COM ports. So you have to set up down here what's called a virtual COM port. And you can see that I've set mine up as COM2. You can actually set it up whatever you want. I just named mine COM2 um, just at random. So it's not real important as long as you uh, have uh, used whatever this number is in your virtual COM port. You want to use that in Stellarium in order to patch through to your uh, next remote software. So, <clears throat> so our our uh, virtual hand pad now is set up. Uh, I do have uh, already. I already have the power on to the mount. So I'm going to go ahead now and do my uh, normal alignment as I normally would, and I'll check back with you uh, in just a few minutes. Okay, now we're back. Now I've already done my alignment, and as you can see, I'm currently on the star Rigel. Now this is just from normally using your hand, your next remote hand pad, just like you would your normal hand pad, going through the normal. Uh, two star alignment then plus four for a total of six stars um, but once you have it aligned and you've already slewed now to your first object this is where you want it now in order to um, start to utilize your COM2 virtual port uh, that you use for Stellarium. So let's go ahead and go over to the other screen now here and you can see that in Stellarium uh, currently it shows uh, just what I clicked on in Stellarium and you can click all around uh, in different areas um, the different stars, right? Well, I'm on Rigel, but right now it doesn't know that I'm on Rigel because I haven't connected it or patched it through Next Remote. So the next thing I want to do now is show you how to do Stellarium and patching it through uh, your um, virtual hand pad here in Next Remote. So again, we've already done our normal alignment. We're already slewed to our, our star. The star is named Rigel, and uh, it could be the moon. It could be anything. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to an, uh, Stellarium and open it up, which I've already done. And we want to go down here and we want to choose uh, the little wrench sign, right? So that's going to open up our telescope control. Now usually it'll open up in uh, plugins, and I think it usually will um, default to angle measure or wherever you've left last uh, uh, left left it last. Uh, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and choose in this menu we're going to go down to telescope control. So again we want plugins, telescope control. Now once we're there we want to go ahead and configure it. Now I've got mine to automatically load at startup. Um, I, I just find it easier once I get it set up uh, I can automatically have it loaded. But let's go ahead and configure it first. Now if you notice our, yours is going to be, if you have not already figured up uh, or actually uh, configured it, it's going to be totally blank. Mine is show, currently showed as stopped because I haven't uh, uh, um, enabled it yet. But let's go ahead and set it up. Let's hit our configure and then you'll see that I've already named it. You'll have a place to put your name. So you'll want to put up here at the very top Stellarium directly through a serial port. All right. Then you'll want to put whatever name of your scope is. I've named mine Celestron Advanced XLT. And then um, I just go with J2000 by default. And then you can actually start or connect at startup if you want. I choose to just do mine manually. And if you scroll this little, right over here, you'll see a little scroll. You'll scroll it down. 
And right here is where you want to put your virtual serial port. Now this is where a lot make a lot of folks make their mistake. They try to put in the original port, the one, the COM port that's connected from uh, next remote directly to your mount. You don't want to put that COM port here. You want to put in the virtual COM port, the same COM port number that's now visible at the bottom of your next remote hand uh, virtual hand pad. So I've already put COM port two in. All right, and of course you want to choose what your if you what type of mount you have, mead have, what have you. So because <clears throat> this does work on several different types of mounts. So I'm on Nexstar Celestron compatible. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I believe that's all the settings there are. And down here underneath host, I just put local host. So let's go ahead and OK. Now once you do that, you're going to see exactly what I have here. It's going to show your name and your amount. All right. All you need to do now is just hit start. And once you hit start, now it says connected. That's what you want. And now that you're connected, we can now close these windows and we'll close this one and now look what we have before I had it it didn't have anything indicating where my telescope was but now because I have it set on Rigel now in the planetarium software it says Celestron Advanced XLT and it's directly hovering over Rigel so that's good because now our planetarium software, Stellarium, knows exactly where I am in the sky. You've already done a alignment just like you normally would. So now we should be able to use now Stellarium instead of looking at charts and so forth and putting everything, you know, through these uh, buttons down here for your planets and so forth or menu items. You can now use Stellarium as your guide to the sky. So if I'm at Rigel and I know that, you know, behind me, for instance, is, uh, or two, uh, uh, where am I at here? We're in the south sky. So I, I know where my orientation is, where the house is, and, you know, what items might be behind the house. But now more than anything, what is right next to me? Well, now we can see that I'm right next to uh, the uh, Orion constellation. So, whoops, I backed out a little bit too far. Let me back it out a little bit. So now if I want to go to, say, Orion, or if I want to go to, let's say, a star near Orion. So I want to go to Antac, Anatech. Well, all I need to do is I clicked on Anatech like you normally would. It still shows my scopes on Rigel. So now what I want to do is go to my keypad, and I want to put in Control. It's kind of dark. I apologize. But Control-1. That's all you have to do. Hit Control-1. And now you hear the scope behind me moving just a short way and it's slewed over now where is my controller you see now the uh, it's sitting right over that star Alanac, Alatac. so there there you have it so you've moved from Rigel to there so now let's show you what will happen if I want to move to Sirius so if I want to move to Sirius let's just click on Sirius and then we're going to go down to the keypad and I'm going to put control 1 you can hear the scope slewing and you see it's moving directly to Sirius. It will it'll overshoot a little bit, correct, come back. And voila. Now when you look through your scope, you should, or if you're doing it remotely with a camera, it should be directly on Sirius. So that's how you work uh, next remote through, or Stellarium through your next remote um, virtual hand pad using the virtual compact port to, um, to make it so much easier to look around your night sky and to navigate uh, to your different uh, celestial um, uh, objects. You can also down here at the bottom, you can actually turn on, which I probably should have done. That would have helped, made it a lot easier to go to the Great Orion of a Nebula, uh, nebula uh, in Orion. So we can actually click on that now and we'll get it clicked. We'll just do one last object here. I can scroll in a little bit so I can see it a little better. All right, so there it says the Great Nebula in Orion, right? So let's go ahead and hit uh, Control-1, and you can hear the scope slewing, and it moves right up to Orion. Okay.
and wonderful honks behind me. That means that's the alarm saying that we've found Orion. So, anyway, so that is uh, a little tutorial on how I uh, use uh, um, the planetary software, uh, of uh, which is free, Stellarium Online, and uh, use it patch through uh, Next Remote, and it works wonderfully. So, I appreciate everybody um, watching, and uh, hope uh, you uh, join my channel. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.